On Authentic Ag, our special guest is Kansas Secretary of Agriculture, Mike Beam. We'll get an update on the state of the state of Kansas agriculture, plus updates from the Kansas Soybean Commission, more from the Kansas Department of Agriculture, the Kansas Livestock Association, and Paragon Ag Advisors. I'm Ken Rogers. This is Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919. KFB.org. And the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks real people just like you and me and we're waiting on you to join us so for fun adventure fuel up fuel your body and let's have some fun In agriculture news from agview.net, consumers ordering more goods and groceries online during this COVID-19 pandemic. Grocery Drive, which is a web-based grocery industry publication, reports 31% of U.S. households using online grocery services over the last month. And of those surveyed, 26% of consumers report using grocery delivery and pickup services for the first time. 39% of those 60 and older consumers are saying the same. Now, this report is based on the survey of more than 1,600 U.S. adults. This pandemic may permanently alter consumer activity as buyers seeking to avoid crowds at grocery stores and follow those social distancing guidelines. But those current pickup and delivery infrastructures, well, they're not quite meeting the demands. Amazon's Prime Pantry uh, temporarily had to shut down and many grocery stores offering the services scheduling appointments days after orders are placed compared with the old same day or next day options. Also, several online providers announcing they would waive delivery fees for shoppers 60 and older. Well, the Beef Checkoff Program and 15 grassroots-led state beef councils won a major court victory recently. In the U.S. District Court of Montana, ruled in favor of USDA and the Montana Beef Council in the matter of RCAF versus Sonny Purdue and USDA. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association praising the court's decision and ends a legal battle that has spanned more than three years and interrupted beef promotion functions in the state of Montana. The cattlemen say the case has threatened local input and promotion efforts at the state level all over the country. And the National Pork Producers Council announcing its board has decided to cancel the upcoming 2020 World Pork Expo as due to COVID-19. World Pork Expo 2021 now, scheduled for June 9th through 11th at the Iowa State Fairgrounds. World Pork Expo, the world's largest pork-specific trade show, more than 20,000 industry professionals gather for three days. Last year, you might recall, it was canceled due to the African swine fever possibility. And another event canceled due to the ongoing pandemic, that is the Wheat Quality Council's Winter Wheat Tour. It was slated to take place in a couple of weeks, and a large group of farmers, industry leaders, educators, millers, and grain traders traipsed across Kansas and parts of Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Colorado getting samples and plus getting an on-the-ground look at uh, the wheat crop. Now, this is the first time the event has been canceled that began back in the 1970s. 
Well, that's Ag News. You can find more on these and other stories online anytime at agview.net. Stay with us. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses and rodeos. And my shoulders took such a beating. And that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery. And so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95% of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months. And I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights, I can throw, I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. So I'm, I'm tickled to death with the results and I'd recommend this process to anyone. And welcome back to the Kansas Ag Report. And our special guest uh, this week uh, is uh, Kansas Ag Secretary uh, Mike Beam. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for the invitation. Well, I tell you, this has been an interesting time that we are in and uh, wanted to uh, have you uh, come on and talk kind of if you will, uh, kind of the state of the state of Kansas agriculture in light of the coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, I know you've had several releases out of, of uh, doing the best you can to kind of keep things as normal as possible. Yes, this is an unprecedented time. Uh, and uh, I, I was just recently thinking that when we have a, a so-called disaster, uh, usually it's a fairly short time period. But you know this is day after day and, and lingers on, and, and I know it's starting to probably wear a little on the psyche uh, of everyone, and it's, there's not anyone uh, that it doesn't touch. But uh, I think one of the messages that we th think is important uh, is to uh, remind everyone that what our farmers and ranchers do day to, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, is providing uh, you know the food, fuel, and fiber. Uh, for the immediate needs, but for uh, this country and for the world to come. So it, uh, part of what we have done and are continuing to do uh, is to try to provide information to our State Emergency Operations Center uh, as they get questions about, you know, what is an essential function and, and what can and can still be done. So we, and we've also just recently sent a news release out saying, you know, it's for the most part, it's business as usual for agriculture, but uh, 
or doing business in a new way. And so it's, um, it, it's very challenging. And we try to remind folks that even with the stay home order and the social distancing, you know, that still applies once, you know, we're off the clock or not actively directly doing serving those essential functions. Well, this time of the year, of course, uh, we've turned the calendar. We're into April. That means uh, spring field work, if it hasn't already begun, will begin soon. Uh, planting intentions, we kind of know what those are. That means there's going to be a lot of things going on. So uh, we have assurances that uh, folks will be able to get the inputs that they need then of, of all those uh, all those things kind of been uh, taken into consideration. So uh, maybe, maybe a few extra phone calls with your supplier to make sure that uh, uh, everybody kind of understands how to get to the needs that the, the things that they need. Well, sure. I think just make sure to, to, to plan ahead and, and call ahead, which I think is probably not really needs to be said, but you're right. We're at a busy season uh, with spring planting, uh, cattle being processed, turned out on grass. Um, but again, uh, fortunately, that can be done with, uh, you know, in most cases with, with groups of less than 10 and always uh, with appropriate social distancing. What about, uh, you know, this time of the year? We'll talk maybe more about the other things that goes on in the spring, but uh, sometimes we do uh, brandings. Uh, any advice there for those groups to get together? I assume those uh, kind of same rules apply this year. Well, I would say yes. It's, uh, we need to take into consideration. Uh, we maybe need to do things a little bit differently. But it's what's be, what has happened in people's interaction over the last 10 days, two weeks, and the next two weeks is statewide, nationwide. That's going to determine how much more the, uh, of the, this virus that spreads. So always, always keep that in mind. We're talking with the Mike Beam, the Kansas Secretary of Agriculture. Let's take a quick break. We'll have more in just a moment. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. And let's continue our conversation now with Mike Beam, who is the Kansas Secretary of Agriculture. And uh, Mr. Secretary, of course, this time of the year, the other thing that goes on is uh, a lot of burning, especially in the Flint Hills. Um, we've seen different reports of this is, this isn't going to happen, maybe reduced. What, what can you tell us when it comes to this annual uh, spring event? Well, yes, we've uh, been in coordination with the Kansas Department of Health and Environment. And they are the entity that, that really monitors uh, air quality and uh, has you know the burning regulations which are pretty minimal for agricultural burning but together we put out uh, a news release uh, recently and, and the intent was for the news release was really twofold one is uh, a consideration for burning less uh, than what you may have planned otherwise uh, because you know that sometimes this smoke can drift into some areas and one of the, the, the real symptoms or problems that, that folks have who contract the disease is respiratory issues. Uh, and secondly, we don't wanna overtax our emergency responders. Uh, and the second message is that those in the Flint Hills have a tool at this uh, ksfire.org website where you can look uh, out 48 hours from your specific geographic locations and get a determination what the likelihood or level of, of smoke drifting into urban centers will be. And so it's a reminder, and gosh, if you're, if you're in that red area, it's, uh, the best thing is to not to burn that day because that means that it's likely to cause some problems in, in population centers. 
before we let you go, uh, a couple of other things. Uh, uh, obviously, we talk a lot about production agriculture, the livestock industry, but uh, KDA also regulates a lot of different things. Uh, you have put some things, you and the governor have put some things in place to help uh, uh, licensees of some of the things that, uh, that uh, you kind of make sure uh, keep commerce moving. Yes, we do uh, license and regulate fuel. And so uh, what a lot of folks don't understand is that EPA has guidelines that on April 1, uh, all the gas stations, fuel stations are to go to a lower vapor fuel. And because of uh, less demand and use, we still have a lot of, of the winter blend fuel out in the distribution area. So we provided a waiver uh, that folks don't con continue to sell and move that uh, winter blend fuel. Uh, at least to the end of April. Secondly, we have a food safety and lodging program where uh, our folks inspect uh, all food service entities. And there's probably nobody hit, hit harder by this than food service, uh, including uh, restaurant uh, folks. So uh, we've issued guidance to the, the food service industry, uh, particularly designed for restaurants who may have a, a big supply of product on hand. Uh, the, this guidance basically says you can resell that uh, to, to retail establishments or even individual consumers. And here are the guidelines uh, and safety precautions to do. So it's, it's hopefully you know, a way that uh, will help uh, open up some more food opportunities where uh, with these local grocery stores and supermarkets uh, and individual consumers as well. All right, Mike. Well, we you know you're a busy uh, guy, but we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to kind of give us an update of what's going on, especially uh, dealing with things with the Kansas Department of Agriculture through this uh, coronavirus, uh, uh, COVID-19. So uh, best of luck, and uh, we'll get through this thing together and stay safe. Thank you. Stay safe, keep the distance, and keep smiling. All right, Mike Beam, the Kansas Secretary of Agriculture, has joined us. Stay with us. We have more coming up. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Kenwin Johannes, the CEO of the Kansas Soybean Association and the administrator of the Kansas Soybean Commission, was awarded the American Soybean Association's Pinnacle Award. The Pinnacle Award is the industry-wide recognition of individuals who have demonstrated the highest level of contribution and leadership within the soybean family and industry through work involving a significant amount of their lifetime and is the American Soybean Association's highest honor. For nearly 40 years, Kenlin Johannes has focused on broadening relationships to strengthen the soybean industry. He started his career as an educator before coming back to his family farm in Nebraska, where he got involved in the Nebraska Soybean Board. He then served as the top executive for soybean associations in Wisconsin and Missouri. In the early 1990s, recognizing the untapped potential of surplus soybean oil, Johannes worked with farmer leaders and university researchers to promote and identify a new use for soybean oil biodiesel. In 1992, Johannes's biodiesel passion led him to become the first executive director of the newly formed National Soy Diesel Development Board, which later became the National Biodiesel Board. Johannes's commitment and skills as an educator and organizer, particularly around biodiesel, have made the U.S. soybean industry stronger for all soybean farmers. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics in soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids, 
from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. As the world continues to face new challenges daily as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, thousands of Kansans who work in a wide variety of roles within agriculture are continuing their efforts to serve the needs of the state. Yes, agriculture is an essential function and we're still in business, but it's certainly not business as usual. Here at the Kansas Department of Agriculture, while the office doors are closed to the public, we are still working from home to support the agriculture stakeholders and licensees who are focused on their continuity of business. Kansas is fifth in the nation in value of ag production, so we know the state and the nation are relying upon Kansas farmers, ranchers, and agribusinesses for the food, fuel, and fiber they produce. The cattle must be fed, the grain must be milled, and the food must be processed and packaged and delivered to your grocery store. So that work continues, and everyone in Kansas agriculture is re-examining everything they do to increase online capabilities, limit human-to-human -human interaction, and enhance their already robust fire security efforts so they can produce what we all need while protecting their families, their employees, and their partners in the food supply chain. Throughout it all, KDA will still be here to help and support Kansas agriculture. We have a special page on our website dedicated to COVID-19 response with ag-related industry guidance, state and national ag resources, updated news about the state response, and contact information to reach staff in all of the KDA divisions and programs. Go to agriculture.ks.gov slash coronavirus, or just click on the link on our homepage. Our focus remains on the continuity of the food supply chain, public health and safety, and the protection of animal health and welfare. And our gratitude remains directed at all of you out there who are serving the needs of the state right now in so many ways. Be safe. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. In response to the changing societal norms brought on by the coronavirus, the Kansas Beef Council has increased its digital advertising to emphasize more retail purchasing information and is providing cook-at-home meal solutions for Kansas consumers. With more people at home and online, the ramped-up digital strategy is targeting users with beef cooking tips and nutritional information. As a result, the checkoff-funded effort reached more than 300,000 people with over 600,000 impressions between March 16th and March 24th. In addition, digital promotion efforts during this time frame generated more than 14,000 web page views and 22,000 video views. KBC also has reached out to traditional media outlets with information on how ground beef is the perfect option for consumers looking to cook a delicious and nutritious meal at home. On a national level, NCBA is closely tracking consumer sentiment specific to coronavirus and any concerns that might impact beef safety or consumer demand. So far, none have been noted. Although 80% of consumers say they are concerned about the virus and what is happening with the economy, they trust the food system. The NCBA consumer marketing and research team is adjusting current checkoff-funded advertising, media relations, and grassroots advocacy programs to reinforce beef's nutritional profile and how it contributes to healthy diets. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Hello, I am Aaron with 
Paragon Ag, a division of Keiko Isom, and I am here to talk about the cash grain markets. Corn basis has been suffering lately with everything going on in the world. Saudi Arabia and Russia have been in a price war after discussions on production cuts to address coronavirus. This has had a huge effect on domestic ethanol and corn demand. Currently, ethanol is trading sub $1 per gallon and is causing ethanol plants to cut back and even stop production. Because of this, corn basis has suffered and continues to do so. On Tuesday, the USDA came out with prospective plantings report and announced bearish news of an estimated 97 million acres of corn expected to be planted. Though basis has been weaker, there are still opportunities to sell into certain markets at reasonable basis values. Feedlots are buying hand to mouth to fit their needs in the nearby and not sticking their necks out too far. Soybean basis values have slipped back recently from recent values as well. Based on recent years values, currently we are well above where we were at this time last year. There are opportunities for good values for those who look and know good markets. The USDA report on Tuesday had bean acres up 10% compared to last year at 83.5 million acres. Grain stocks report had soybeans down 17% from last year at 2.25 billion bushels. Wheat has been fairly steady in basis values. Buyers are starting to look at getting new crop positions put together and are likely offering some good values for harvest time frame on your wheat. It might be a good idea to at least start to get a feel for new crop wheat values. The Planted Acres report had wheat acres at 44.7 million acres, down 1% from last year. If you have any questions, looking for any help getting values for your grain, or wanting other selling advice, give us a shout at 888-452-8751. And that's our show. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, email me, kentrogers at gmail.com. We thank you for your support. We want you back next time on Authentic Ag. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well in their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.